Okay, I'm going to get into some business stuff now. I'm going to talk about the difference between prospecting versus positioning. If you run a business, this is crucial information. If you're just starting out as an entrepreneur, you really want to pay attention to this. The mistake a lot of businesses make and why they go under is not just ineffective products and poor services and poor customer service. It's because they spend way much too, too much time prospecting and too much money prospecting versus positioning. So what's the difference between positioning versus prospecting? Here's an example. Early in my career, I wrote articles for fitness magazines. One example is I interviewed Clarence Bass, very famous fitness personality. He's this old guy who likes to post pictures of himself in his skivvies, and he's known for being Mr. Ripped. Anyway, I interviewed him, and I got that article published in Iron Man magazine. Not only was it published in Iron Man magazine, it was a front cover article, meaning Clarence Bass was on the front cover, and it was a promotion for that article in the magazine. That was the centerpiece article in the magazine. So anyway, I got paid $500 for this article. Now contrast that to paying for a full page ad in Iron Man magazine, which would probably cost $1,000, $1,500, who knows? Probably even more than that. How many people are gonna look at that ad versus read that article? So I got paid for an article that way more readers are actually gonna pay attention to than if I paid for an advertisement that people are just gonna flip the page. When you see advertisements on TV, what do you do? You fast forward, if, assuming you recorded it, or you mute it, you come back later, or you use methods where you don't even watch commercials at all, you bypass it all together, because we don't pay attention to commercials, we shut off right away. So that's one example of prospecting versus positioning. Also, early in my career, I didn't have a budget for prospecting. I couldn't afford to spend $1,500 for an ad in a magazine. And even if I did, you really think you're going to recoup $1,500 of value from that? No way. But that article, not only, it was actually more beneficial than if the article were written by me or were about me because I had no branding at this time. I was really new in the business. So it was actually a very good example of positioning because it was an interview with someone way more famous than me. So more people are going to read that article than if it were just something written by me on a topic at that time. And then at the very end, they see where they can learn more about me. Go check out my website. Now, you could say that most people probably didn't do that, and that's probably true because the article is about Clarence. Nevertheless, though, I still have my name aligned with a very prominent fitness personality. So that's a, that's a good example of positioning versus prospecting. Now, here's another example. Advertising on a podcast versus being a guest on a podcast. If you advertise on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, right, the number one podcast in the world, that's going to cost a lot of money. Now, you're going to reach potentially millions of people, but imagine if you're a guest on his show. You're not paying to be a guest on his show. In fact, sometimes he flies you in. He pays for you to come on the show. He doesn't pay you an income, but he pays for your flight. I don't know if he does this with every guest, but some of my friends who've been on his show stated that he covered their travel expenses, which is very nice. Now, they got a million views on YouTube, maybe several million downloads, maybe 10 million downloads. That's invaluable. Imagine if they weren't on the show and they just did an advertising advertisement, which he talks about at the very beginning of the episode. Most people are going to fast forward right through that. If you watch it on YouTube, you're not even going to see that. He doesn't interrupt the episode in the middle to pitch the product or service. So you see where I'm going? Being a guest is positioning. Advertising on that same episode would be prospecting. Positioning doesn't cost anything, but it's a million times more effective. Prospecting is very expensive, and it's also very ineffective. I've sponsored several different podcasts, and it was a big waste of money. I could have taken the money that I spent on a podcast. I could have taken, one of them cost $1,500, another $2,000. I could have taken that money and just threw it out the window and it would have been about as effective as that. I could have taken that money to a casino in Vegas and played roulette and I would have had a better chance of making money. I could have taken it to a slot machine and spent an hour there and I would have had a better chance of making money. You see where I'm going? It's a waste of money. Even if you have the budget, advertising is always a waste of money. I have the budget now. I could blow tons of money on advertising if I want to. 
but I still use the same exact methods that I used early in my career when I didn't have any money because that's positioning. It's not prospecting. Doing my own podcast with Sincere Hogan, that's an example of positioning because we're putting out great content and we're attracting listeners. We're networking with high quality people when we had guests. Having a very strong information-based website. You go to my website, there's hundreds of articles. Hormone optimization, business marketing, how to get bigger and stronger, how to lose body fat, nutrition, all kinds of videos, tons of free content. That's positioning because it draws an audience, it establishes value. While I'm out here talking to you, I'm living my life, people are reading my articles, they're getting to know me, and then they're buying products. Now, if I just had a website where it's just products, no information whatsoever, people may come once and buy something, or they may, never, or they may come once, look around, and say, ah, I don't really see anything I'm interested in, and then they never come back. You don't have stickiness. Stickiness is important because it's not enough just to get people to come to your website one time. You have to get them to want to come back multiple times, over and over. I've had customers that followed me that have followed me since 2002. 17 years later, I still have customers that buy my products and services. That's because I've created a, a, a strong relationship with them and also provided value where they want to keep coming back to my website because they want to see what I'm doing because I'm continuing to put out free information. Same thing with your Instagram account or your YouTube channel or your Facebook page. If you're just posting pictures of your ass every day, Sure, a couple of guys are going to be like, wow, here's a hot girl. I'm going to check this out. And then they're going to go, you know what? There's a million other hot girls doing this. So they're going to forget about you. That's not positioning. It's not even effective prospecting. It's just self-exploitation with no benefit whatsoever. A lot of guys make this mistake too. I'm not going to just pick on the ladies. A lot of guys, fitness guys, they just post pictures of their abs every goddamn day. It's like, okay, we get it, motherfucker. You're in shape. What else do you have? Do you have anything to say? Are you just a fucking Ken doll that's going to post pictures of yourself every motherfucking day? You don't have dick to say, so you have to rely on your looks, which are going to fade eventually. You're not going to be good looking and rip forever. That's just inevitable. But your brain can last a long time. Your content can last a long time. And also, it's a mistake when you have, let's say, a picture, some provocative picture. Here's me in a bikini at the beach, or here's me in my Speedo surfing. And then you have this 500-word essay on some pontification that you think is real deep and profound. No one's going to read that shit because there's no connection between what you're saying and the picture. <laughs> the two have nothing to do with each other. And let's be honest, on Instagram, people just click like and scroll. Scroll like, scroll like, scroll like. Very few people are reading what you have to say. And if you write anything, you better get to the point in a few sentences, definitely no more than a paragraph. No one's reading 500 words on their phone on Instagram. I see people on Instagram all day. All they're doing is looking at their phone, like, scroll, like, scroll, like, scroll. Maybe a thumbs up because people are too lazy to write words. They just put an emoji. Hey, Mike, thumbs up. Hey, guys, fuck you, okay? I mean, it's, you're just wasting your time. So don't get overly reliant on social media either. People think that if they have a social media account, they don't need to have a website. That's stupid. Think about how many social media accounts have come and gone, companies rather. Remember MySpace? I do. Everybody used to use MySpace when it first came out. Now most people don't even remember what it is. Facebook is going the way of MySpace. That's inevitable. And who the hell knows what's going to happen to Instagram? Five, ten years from now, it may not even exist. But your website can always exist. I've had a website for 17 years. And no matter what happens with social media or YouTube or any of these other mediums, I'm always going to have my website and I decide what I put or don't put on my website. I don't have to abide by anyone's rules. If I want to post pictures of my dick, I could do that on my website, right? I'm not going to do that, obviously, but I could if I wanted to. Point is, is that you want to have complete autonomy over whatever medium you use. That's a strong component of positioning. So another example of positioning would be, instead of paying to do an internship, for example, you volunteer your time. For example, when I first got in the business, I wasn't confident that I could charge people to come to my kettlebell workshops. I didn't feel confident as an instructor. So I needed to get more experience. Now, rather than paying to maybe be someone's underling and follow them around, 
I did, I offered to train some volunteer firefighters in Northern Virginia. I said, look, I'll meet up with you people once a week and I'll put you through a kettlebell workout, no charge at all, completely free. So I met up with these men and women once a week for about eight weeks, I believe. Halfway through, I was like, okay, I'm good at this. This is definitely, I'm a natural for being a fitness instructor. People like what I have to say. I know I can definitely charge for this. So it built confidence and it also looks good on a resume. Now, I didn't do it for that purpose. In fact, I barely ever talk about the fact that I did this. It's certainly not now. This is 17 years ago. Who cares what I did 17 years ago? But the point is, is that it was another example of positioning because it allowed me to network with some high quality people, get some experience, and it also looks good on a resume. So it's a good business building tool. So those are all examples of positioning over prospecting. I'll leave you with the final one. And some of the fem Nazis are probably going to get mad about this, but I don't know why any fem Nazi would be following me because according to them, I'm a Neanderthal a caveman. So there's no real reason to look at what I do unless you just want to get angry. So maybe that's why. All right. Let's say you're a man and you're trying to attract a woman or in particular, a certain kind of woman. So you go, you know what? I'm really into fitness. I'm going to go to a fitness seminar or a fitness expo, and I'm just going to talk to girls there. And you play a numbers game. You just Every time you see a girl that you find is attractive or a woman you find is attractive, you just walked up to her. She has no clue who you are. She doesn't know anything about you. You try to get a conversation going. Maybe she's interested. Maybe she's not. Right? You're going to be playing the numbers, and you better get used to rejection because you're going to be dealing with a lot of it. Now, contrast that to someone who's a speaker at that event. You get up on stage and you give a killer presentation. You're fired up. You just go for it. Just the fact that you're on stage, you're already positioned because women like confident guys, whether they want to admit it or not. And I don't know any woman who won't admit that she likes a confident guy. Just to get on stage and speak, you have to have a certain level of confidence. Now, if you happen to be a really good speaker, forget it. You're, you're going you're gonna to be elevated to a certain level of status. After you give that lecture, I guarantee you there are going to be plenty of women in that audience who want to talk to you. They're coming to you now. That's positioning. You go into them, that's prospecting. Another would be, let's say, online dating. You open up an online dating profile and you're just emailing women all day long. That's prospecting. It's completely ineffective because women, any woman who has an account, a, a dating website account, she probably gets 500 messages a day. She's not even going to see yours. And she's certainly not looking at other people's accounts because she has so many people coming to her. So she's positioned, you're prospecting, and prospecting always loses. Remember all the people prospecting for gold back in the day? Very few of them made any money because prospecting is a waste of time. So remember, position yourself by establishing strong value so people come to you rather than prospecting. I'm not gonna go knocking on doors and talk about my nutrition supplements I'm not going to set up a booth at an expo and people come to me and I have to pitch them over and over and over again. No, I can put up a clip on YouTube explaining the benefits that draws people to my website. I can write an article for Charles Poliquin's website. I wrote an article on eight tips to increase testosterone. I mean, I've gotten thousands of orders from that one article. He used, and the article was so effective because he's, I mean, he passed a while back, and, but he's still an affiliate because I believe the money goes to his daughter, which is great. I, I always liked Charles. I felt really bad when he passed away because he was a great guy. And he was very helpful with my business. He always offered to help me out, which was very nice of him because he's very busy. He didn't have to do that. So when I wrote this article on eight tips to increase testosterone, not only did it help me, it helped him because it was a high traffic article. He got a lot of people viewing it. So he would post it often on his social media accounts and send it out to his newsletter base. And every time he did, I would got a huge uptick in sales. So that's an example of effective networking, win-win meaning. It's a win for him. It's a win for me. And it's also a very effective example of positioning because that was more effective than, let's say, me putting a banner ad on his website, which no one's going to look at. No one's clicking on banner web ads. No one's looking at advertisements in magazines. Most people are not looking at magazines at all anymore. That's a dying art. These commercials before a YouTube clip, you're just waiting for it to end. If there's an option to click through it, you do. You're not sitting there going, oh, this commercial looks interesting. Let me see what it's all about. So again, positioning over prospecting. You'll win every time. If you last long enough positioning, you'll be set. It's a very effective way to build your business. 
and you're way less likely to go under because you're not spraying the money hose, hoping that things work out. All right, that's the free information for today. Take care, everyone. Go check out my website, mikemahler.com. Take care.